This is Overtime with Chris Dewar, only on KHQA. Well, this is Saturday, February the 5th, and you have entered Overtime, where we are in the throes of superfan shootout euphoria, and who can blame us with what just might be the most anticipated girls' high school basketball matchup ever to grace the Gem City City leading the pack tonight. Nationally ranked Incarnate Ward in town for Quincy Notre Dame. Undefeated, the house packed on whiteout night tonight, and early on in this game, it would be the Red Knights going to work behind the Division I signee, Brittany Carter, going to Illinois State. Great bucket for her there. Quincy Notre Dame early couldn't muster much, but they did muster with some Shannon Foley. Great bucket for her. Other direction, I to A going to work. The spin move by the big Rita Flynn. Lots of bigs for Incarnate War. They were rather sizable. q &E trailing by 16 and a half. At the half, second half, though, Tori Kuhn comes out hot, getting her team back into this game with a strong rebound and the putback. More from Tori right here as she gets the nice bank shot to fall for herself there for two more. And then it's Jordan Furrix with a great take and the bucket as her team erases that big lead down to as few as nine points. However, Incarnate Ward just way too strong down the stretch. And Quincy Notre Dame loses at home for the first time in 32 games. And they lose badly tonight. Incarnate Ward, the real deal. 61-40 to 40 is your final there. Well, they debuted this week at number one in Illinois Class 1A basketball. But the Havana Lady Ducks had a much more personal agenda tonight. Jerry Wilson's team taking on Illini West, trying to avenge an earlier loss. And look at this, Jill Friedrich in the early going gives Savannah the nice lead. Here comes Gracie Boster, though, off the bench early and helping her team significantly for the Chargers. She knocks down the open jumper, but she's not done. The freshman came up huge today for Zach Keen's team. Great steal for her, giving her team, which was listless early, a nice spark right here. And the pick-me-up on the steal and the deuce at the other end. Just before the first quarter is about to end, Illini West down 11-8. to eight. This is Bailey Campbell from the outside hitting the jump shot there for the three-pointer. We're all tied up at 11. The next 16 minutes of this game, however, would belong to Havana. It would start with Macy Brown, the All-Stater. Beautiful take for her right there as she gets the bucket to fall. Then more to come from Havana as they would take the rather sizable lead at many points. This lead jumped out as you see the beautiful bucket right here to as many as 14 points it was 10 points at the end of the fourth quarter here come the chargers gracie bostert aforementioned lauren Gronwald with the great take there here's miss bostert again and all of a sudden it was a roll for the chargers as they would score 36 fourth quarter points that's huge it's like an nba fourth quarter great take there by tiffany moore as well iw is still down two in the waning seconds of the game who else gracie bostert flat-footed she said she didn't even know what the situation was, threw it up, and sends this game to overtime. And in overtime, the Chargers go back to work, and they've got their second win in this ball game. It starts right here with the aforementioned Gracie Boster. She takes it up and gets the bucket to fall and the deuce at that point. Plus one, more to come right here. Miss uh, Boster with the steal, and she ends up getting the ball inside to Carter Weir, who misses but is there to rebound her own putback and give Illini West the 88-85 to victory. Great day for the Chargers, and especially for young Miss Gracie Boster, who was your MVP of the ballgame today, got a trophy and 27 points to show for her efforts in the Chargers' victory, their second of the year over Havana. Time, but I was just like, I know I need to make this, and I don't know, I'm not that great of a shooter, so I wasn't really sure what was going to happen, but when it went in, I was just really surprised. I thought Havana did an excellent job of taking away Carter early. Uh, Lauren wasn't getting her shots to fall, and Gracie just kind of stepped up, and you know, that, that shows you the type of team we got. We got a girl coming off the bench that's scoring 27 points, play a lot of minutes, and does a lot of good stuff for us. We really came out and started doing what we needed to do, I mean, coming out and getting our steals, playing the kind of defense we want to play, and watching shoulders and not turning the ball over as much. I mean, we did throughout the whole game, but really came out and did what we needed to do. Well, there was plenty of high drama on the breakfast edition of the KHQA Subway Superfan Shootout as well. Joe Morano has this breakdown of a thrilling Keokuk versus West Central game. We decided it was time to play. We hadn't been playing the whole game. We had a whole week off of school and we were lazy. And then when it came to go, we weren't going to lose. Well, I think we just came out with a lot more intensity. Uh, in between quarters, I told them there wasn't anything I could put on the, on the right up on the whiteboard that was going to win the game for them. They just had to go out and execute. I think uh, we picked up our pressure a little bit, full court, and forced them into some turnovers. Uh, just started pounding the ball inside a little bit more to Lauren. Uh, I thought we uh, 
looked past her, looked over her a few times early in the game. So just basically started to execute the game plan that I'd hoped we'd execute the whole game. Oh, it's a big step because we can never seem to top off big games like this. Like Herman and all of them, we lost. And so to actually have a win against a quality team is a big deal for us. It's a real good win. I think it's a confidence uh, builder. You know, down nine going into the last quarter against a quality team like Calhoun. And uh, I think it's going to show us, uh, you know, no matter what obstacles we're facing, if we just execute the game plan and, and uh, believe we'll be in good shape. So especially finishing up the last two weeks of the year before we get into postseason, it, it's a nice game for us to come out on top. They're having a little fun with buttons in the back. Obviously, that was talking about Clopton's big comeback win last night. So you saw Lauren Yeager, who had the great game last night, 17 points, as Clopton came back from 10 down in the second in the second half and in the fourth quarter to get the victory. So congratulations to Clopton. Great win for, as we saw there, Lauren Yeager and Larry Lagerman and crew. Now we're going to try and give you Joe Morano's breakdown of the big Keokuk West Central thriller today. <laughs> Fans who got up bright and early for the opener of the KHQA Subway Superfan Shootout would not be disappointed as Keokuk and West Central hit the road early for a showdown at the pit. A close matchup throughout the first half pitted Chelsea Stanley and Tiffany King constantly trading buckets after first working through the rust from a week off. You know, we've been out, out all last week and had a game last night, so we did. We got up early, we came, and we tried as hard as we could beginning. Things weren't falling for us, then we just picked it up. Well, you know, we've been off for so long. Actually, last night was our first game or anything to do with basketball since last Saturday, and we were trying to make up for our bad performance last Saturday down at Carrollton, and we just did what we needed to, fought through it. The Lady Chiefs seized control in the third quarter then, powered by a combination of Stanley and Aaron Ohmeyer baskets, helping Mike Davis's crew to a nine-point advantage through the first 24 minutes, but it just set the stage for an all-entertaining final quarter. Um, we couldn't give up. That's a big thing. And our defense, we had to play solid defense, and our offense was going to come. You know, we just really needed to work on our defense. Stiff defense took the Lady Cougars to within four after this basket, and West Central wouldn't go away. However, despite Chelsea Stanley fouling out with three minutes to go, the play of Alexis Lozano Dobbs kept Keokuk in the game. King would continue to do her thing in the post, tying up the game at 53 with her 24th and 25th points on the night, all with under two minutes to play. And a clutch defensive stand ending with the Lady Cougars coming up with a turnover, coupled with a pair of Alex Shad free throws, gives West Central the lead for good. We just have such good players, I think, you know, we can just push the ball and it just really helps us having such good point guards. A last second attempt by the Lady Chiefs falls short, giving Brian Bettis' team a hard fought win, along with some tough preparation for regional play that begins next week. Well, I would say this is the kind of game you want to play going into regional, and that's why we picked it up last year. We're just hoping it carries us over. Oh, definitely. Um, we start, I do believe our first game is Tuesday. And we are so excited. This game, a win like this, is going to carry us far. Joe Morano, KHQA Sports, Quincy. Nice job, Joseph. Now let's check in on the Marion County Lady Mustangs, undefeated, taking on West Hancock in the final girls game of the morning. Jessica Red, she's good. West Hancock trying to counter her early on. West Hancock really good out of the gate. Abby Gibbs trying to pull off the short jumper. She does in the upset bid. But here comes our good friends from Marion County. It's Miss Plunkett to Miss Red for the easy down low. We've seen that numerous times over the last two years. We'll see it plenty more. Jessica Red's spinorama move. She had 23 points in the first half. She also blocked 12 shots today. Playing on a bad foot, no less. How about Miss Plunkett? Randy Lee making that work as well right there. And it was all Plunkett all the time today. Not only did she have a big day, but her little brother Reed hit a half-court shot in one of the boys games today to win 100 bucks so congratulations to him marion county stays undefeated gets the big win today final count in this one sees marion county victoria 64 to 48 again jessica red with 29 points and 12 blocks well straight ahead we drive headlong into an intriguing slate of boys games the super fan plus the ihsa postseason is already underway on the mats in the land of lincoln we'll tell you who's sectional bound when overtime rolls on how did it go check it out I'm engaged. You got engaged on a blind date? Well, we went to Fridays and had an amazing time and just really connected. Hi, baby. Ooh, roommate. Uh... It's easy to get carried away with that Friday feeling. Right now, get carried away with the bold flavors of Friday's fusions. Delicious skewers smothered in sauces from around the world, starting at only $6.99. In here, it's always Friday. 
And a Royal Caribbean cruise scratcher's ticket. You couldn't use a week in the Caribbean, huh? Let yourself go, my friend. Feel the ocean breeze. Yeah. Yes, enjoy. Are you gonna pay for that ranch dressing? Huh? The ranch? You gonna pay for it? The 25th anniversary cruise game from the Missouri Lottery. Win up to $75,000 or Royal Caribbean Cruise Vacation. Also play the Silver Anniversary Scratchers game for a chance at a million dollars. Because life is totally bananas, you need insurance you can depend on and afford, like Guide 1 insurance. Well, that was easier than I thought. It's time to get back to work. And industrial workforce is hiring now. If you're reliable, a quick learner, with mechanical ability and physical stamina, we've got a good job with great pay for you. Applicants must pass a drug screening and be able to work some weekends and overtime, too. Get a good job. Industrial workforce is hiring. See us at 234 North 5th Street in Quincy or apply online at www.quincyworkforce.com. When we were going through the arbitration process, people asked, what can we do to help? People felt that it was important for us to be here. In a small community, we have to treat people right, and when we do, they keep coming back and they tell their friends. Now what's happening is we're back in business full time, full strength. The service has been such a huge part of our whole business. We have guys that are GM trained. Everybody in the shop is college graduates. We're back full strength, doing what we do best, taking care of you, the customer. ConnectTriStates.com is your complete source for weather in the Tri-States. Real-time reports on the weather of the day and email and text alerts keep you up to date when you're on the move. Your search stops here at ConnectTriStates.com. And welcome back, everybody, to this special Superfan Shootout edition of Overtime, where we scrambled for a long time last night to find an opponent for Q&D. We found the Payson Seymour Indians. Brian Ray, thank you very much. His team came to play today. Not a cameo. If it was, it was going to be a starring one. Aaron Edwards finds Landon Epperson for the three. More from Payson off the steal. It's Mr. Edwards who finds Bryce Turwell with a pretty finish. And Payson Seymour giving Q&D all it could handle in the first half tonight. Connor Cramsey trying to stem the tide. He's in trouble, but does find the wide open Kramer Barnes all by himself on the down low. Then it's Anthony Bruns working from the corner here in front of a packed house tonight at the pit. Mr. Bruns knocking down the three, but Payson would take every measure of the Raiders in the first half. How about Adam Hilgenbrink working off the drive? Banks went off the window and puts it down. How about some Anthony Bruns again, though, from Q&D? In answer, he has money from the outside, knocks that down. But you know what? It would be Aaron Edwards and Payson up seven at the half, but things have reversed a little bit in the second half. And in the uh, second half right now, we are all tied up at 45 apiece with about seven minutes left to go. Is that correct, Joseph? Yes, 45 apiece. We'll get you an update on a final score for this one if it happens by the end of the show. Meanwhile, Central E and Pittsfield going at it today. And it would be no Clay Vass, still mysteriously out with a leave of absence. So our man Zach Short, coaching Central Lee today, did a good job. His team leading in the first quarter behind Andrew Matheson, playing some great resourcefulness on the offensive glass. Great spin move and the putback. Central Lee led 13-8 early. Dalton Hoover, though, the other big fella in this game. Everybody looking at with a nice three. More to come right here. Great backdoor cut. Taylor Cattleman finding Brad Hamilton, who is the man today. He was just magnificent. More Hamilton right here from three range. Knocks that in. And then it's Brad Hamilton showing you the full range of his game, working from the blocks as Pittsfield reverses that early five-point deficit and takes a one-point lead at the half. But you know what? As I said, Central Lee just showing a lot of moxie in this game. That's uh, Kyle Crowder from the outside with a triple. And then on successive possessions, it is Brandon Peasley with a triple as well. Again, a one-point lead for Pittsfield going into the second half. Pittsfield looking for their big fella inside. That is Dalton Hoover. And this is pretty, but not as pretty as what's going to happen next. Andrew Matheson, Steelerama. He only scored five points tonight, but two of them right here. Absolutely beautiful as he goes up and slams one down for the enjoyment of everybody in the building. Matheson, though, held the five points, three rebounds tonight. That meant Dolvin Hoover was doing his job defensively, and Brad Hamilton was all over the place on offense. 18 points to lead the cause, and what was a four-point lead just kept expanding by Taylor Cattleman as the Pittsfield Sockies get a high-quality win tonight. Your hero of the night. Seems like he's the MVP every year he plays in this thing. Brad Hamilton and the Pittsfield Sockies, who win 44-32 to tonight. The other game of the day saw Reno Pinkston squad 
of West Hancock taking on Illini West. It's been a long time since the Titans have been able to beat the Chargers. The Chargers started off good early in this game. Jack Boster from the outside for the triple. But the story of this day for West Hancock was Paxton Harmon, who was instant offense, that little nifty, unorthodox 12-footer that Reno Pinkston loves to say is pretty much tough to guard. It was there. And then it's Austin Parker on the inside with uh, the nice move as well. Uh, or is that Austin Boyer? Excuse me, that might have been Austin Boyer right there. Then a little Jack Bostert at the other end doing some work in this one as well. Jack uh, Bostert with a nice move. How about Max Schlicker at the other end in answer with a nice bucket as well right here. Back and forth would go in this game until it would be uh, West Hancock finally pulling away today and getting a high quality victory in this ball game winning over Illini West 48 to 37 would be your final good win for Reno Pinkston's crew as they absolutely needed that one to get back on an even kill we'll hear more from coach Pinkston coming up a little later this week as well other scores of a regular season type nature Carrollton today jumps on Triopia wins 52 to 38 Sean Coonrod with 13 points in the victory for the Hawks, who have caught fire of late. They also beat West Central on Friday. Meanwhile, Unity, a 20-point winner today over Southeastern. And Griggsville Perry, no match for Camp Point Central. Zach Main throws 22 points into the cup tonight in the victory there. The Hannibal Pirates tonight uh, go on the road and lose to Boonville by the final count of 57-65. to And Mark Twain, a hard luck loser on the boys' side as well tonight, losing to Centralia by the final count there of 51-49. to Best news of the night. Well, it was the best news up until the state semifinals, but the Quincy High Junior Boys, the Quincy Junior High School Boys, let's go back to the scoreboard if we can, Lily. If we can, i got one more score to give you. Coming up right here, Quincy High Junior Boys, there you see it right there, finish in the, top, in the get to the final four today in the state tournament as they advance, but in the semifinals end up losing to Jane Adams, 53-42, to despite 27 points from Carson Gay. The Comets will face Shenandoah coming up Thursday for third place. Congratulations to Quincy Junior High School. The Comets showing up big. Now on to wrestling today from Macomb, your regionals. You're looking at Garrett Kessner, who would wrestle for the first time this season today in the regionals. But at 250 pounds, we're going to start you off with this big fella, Cody Shilson from West Hancock, who is a man monster. Great takedown right there of Brandon Cousins from Macomb. Then he's going to flip Cousins to put him on his back for the pinfall victory. And Cody Shilson is going to the sectional as a regional champion. Congratulations to West Hancock's finest. More to come right here. Blake Schutte coming up big time right here for Quincy Notre Dame, who would be your regional champion on the team side today. Flipping Martin Orundo, or Orduno, I should say, right there with a nice move right there. A great reversal coming up here by Orduno to tie the match back up. But a key moment when Shuddy would come up and break the hold for the reversal coming up right here. And he would hold on today for a 10-9 decision. You see it right there. Great move by Quincy Notre Dame's finest right there as he gets the 10-9 decision and the victory today. Very emphatic moment for uh, Mr. Schulte. Congratulations to Blake there. Meanwhile, at 140, Jonah Cogshell, he's just really good. Jonah working right here, the great escape and the reversal for two. Two more as he's going to come up with an easy 12-5 decision for the victory and the championship today. So moving on as expected, Central Southeasterns as uh, Jonah working right here for his points and for his victory. Meanwhile, 171 pounds. State rank, Philip Norton working for Macomb, working against uh, Beardstown's Clayton Seward, who's a very good wrestler in his own right. More of Norton right here. Two more on the reversal. Low-scoring match today, but it would be Norton getting the championship at the regional by a 6-4 to four count. We mentioned the human muscle here at Kester. Got a little winded today, but he looked good at times. Great uh, pickup right there and the takedown. So he'd end up winning a 15-6 decision today. Going to run away and hide from his opponent at 189 as he's advancing on and keeping that central. Oh, look, a nice takedown there as well as he keeps Central's hopes alive for a return to state as a team as well in this. Let's take you up to 285 now. We got you wrestling. Here's Matt Hugenberg right here working it hard. The big heavyweight from Quincy Notre Dame with the takedown right here, making quick work of his opponent, advancing on, winning in a minute 33 via the pinfall and moving on. More from Notre Dame about to come up right here. Gage Stevens, who has been a little bit injured, a little bit banged up, but who showed up big today. 125 pounds, you're about to look at Gage Stevens working for the takedown right here. And uh, he's going to later immobilize Brock Hay for the win by fall in the first round today. Other winners today included Rory Hibbert of Camp Point Central, Antonio Quintana of Beardstown, Jacob Smith, of course, from Central Southeastern, and uh, Jake, uh, Lucy, as, or Jack Lucy, I should say, as well, from uh, West Hancock. Sorry about that, Jack. Uh, nice wins for all of those. Also, McCombs, Josh Edison, 
and uh, Beardstown's David Acosta, all winners today. Congratulations to all, all heading to regionals, or excuse me, sectionals as regional champions. Also want to congratulate five Quincy Blue Devil wrestlers who advanced on to the sectional at Granite City. Two of them champions. As we go to that graphic, it will be Hunter Emmerich at 130 pounds and Dakota Downs at 145 pounds, both advancing as champions of the regional today. So congratulations to the Blue Devils, also Hannibal today, showing up nicely at the uh, Francis Howell tournament. Had four guys with four wins today, so we'll update that for you coming up tonight on the web as well. Up next here on Overtime, we'll survey all the day's collegiate hardwood action. Waiting for things you want can be hard to do. Since the last thing you want to do is wait a long time for phone upgrades, U.S. Cellular gives them to you faster. Don't wait years. Get a new phone in as little as 10 months and free accessories and ringtones with rewards. Only from U.S. Cellular. Hi, I'm Stacy Hall, sales manager of Conic Communications. Stop by one of our nine locations in the tri-state area. We want to be your cellular store. Where's the place to go for team sports? Game Masters. Fully stocked with athletic gear, performance apparel, and accessories. You name it, we got it. Year-round sports, team uniforms, we got it. Check out the all-season sports gear from your locally owned powerhouse, Game Masters. Footwear, we got it. Local fan gear, we got it. Under Armour, we got it. Oakley Tap Out, we got it. Got it. Need it, we got it. Get it at Game Masters. Wendy's Spicy Chicken Nuggets. All white meat, seasoned with peppers and savory spices. But the real kick? You get five pieces for only 99 cents. Only at Wendy's. You know when it's real. Why do you see so many new Kias on the road? Simple. 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, great gas mileage, styling, and prices like this. New 2011 Kia Sorento LX. 199. Kia Sorento, 19 Shot and Kirk Kia of Quincy on 24th Street, just south of the Chevy store Quincy. KiaQuincy.com. Do you want tips to get better gas mileage out of your car? Answers on how to get your garden growing greener or how to pick a decor that best suits your home. Log on to ConnectTriStates.com and click Expert Connect. To get quality advice from local experts, you'll see how many answers to our daily dilemmas are just a click away. From picking a vacation destination to stretching your hard-earned dollar, ConnectTriStates.com's Expert Connect has the answers you can trust. Come on out to Scotty's. You don't know what you're missing. Check out laser tag, bumper cars, velocity, and much, much more. It's fun. It's cool. It's awesome. Dad, when can we come back? Finally got a chance to check in with the Illinois College Blue Boys today, taking on Lawrence. Right day to catch him, Craig Balls. He is resourceful. Great bucket for him, driving the paint for the deuce. How about Nathan Kohler, who has been a fire lately, knocking down the triple? We're not done yet. little Jacob Tucker action for you as Illinois College would take apart Lawrence today. Great stuff from Mr. Tucker right there. And a little more of Craig Balls. we leave you with that as Illinois College gets the win over Lawrence today. Final count in that one was 79-60, to 19-point victory for the Blue Boys today. The rest of the boys' scores, not nearly so good today as Western Illinois loses at home to IPFW and Dane Fife. 67 to 57 is your final there, or 67 to 56 is your final there. HLG, a loser big time to McKendry, 88 to 49, and Avila drops a 28 point victory on Culver Stockton. How about the John Woodmen? Would they be more successful? Absolutely today, as Mike Elby's team was working it at both ends of the floor. How about Will Carr? Will to power right there with the enormous SWAT. Then Reagan Bringer finds Jamal Wolf as the Wolf cleans things up at the other end for the long two there. Then it's Wolf working in transition right here. Fear the Wolf, kids. He's going to find Bringer. Reagan Bringer with a nice take, the soft touch, and the two is John Wood just absolutely going to work today. Ryan Stuckman off the miss. Rashawn Nunn going to come up with the take and the feed, and he's going to go up and in for two more. John Wood hangs on to pull one off today. And get the victory. Final count in this one sees the Trailblazers victorious 64-63. to Also on the docket today, women's side. Culver Stockton loses by 7 to Avila. We've got uh, Lawrence College falling to the Lady Blues of Illinois College 58-36. to 
Uh, Southeastern Community College, a nice win today over DMAC. And North Central today loses to John Woods, 72-58. to 58. Also, the Western Illinois women losers today as well. How about some high school girls basketball today? Regular season fun, Grigsville Perry. Oh, it's a salute for Lexi Despain, who has become her school's second all-time leading scorer. And then Despain goes to work trying to become number one today with a nice baseline jumper for two right there. Unity work at a day from the three-point range. It's Brianna Begaman. She had that. She also had a half-court shot. We're going to endeavor to bring you on Sensational 7 this week. She was good. Grigsville Perry a little better today. Alex Moore with a nice baseline jumper for her team as Grigsville Perry gets a high-quality, high-caliber victory today over Unity by the final count here of 69 to 60 is your final there. Some girls scores to pass along. Central Southeastern a win over Pittsfield today, 56 to 37. Brown County gets one on the board in the W column as they beat Triopia by the final count of 39 to 30. In Missouri tonight, Bowling Green too much for Ellsbury winning that game, 67 to 24 is your final there. An updated score as we speak from the pit at Quincy Notre Dame. Quincy Notre Dame currently trailing Payson 54 to 51 with 50 seconds left in the ball game. We're keeping you right up to the minute on KHQA Subway Superfan Shootout stuff. Coming up, we'll have more overtime for you right after this. Featuring the brightest screen available, the Samsung Mesmerize Android-powered phone is also a dazzling one. It lets you take, watch, and share HD videos, and message faster using swipe technology. Now at U.S. Cellular, get buy one, get one free deals on all Android-powered phones. You'll get a Samsung Mesmerize free when you buy one. Activate both, switch, and get $200 in credit. Only at U.S. Cellular. Don't have time to tune in? Log on. ConnectTriStates.com. KHQA gives you all your news, weather, and community information. Find exactly what you're looking for all the time. ConnectTriStates.com makes it easy to get live up-to-date weather. See if your school is closed or delayed. Check local sports, events, or entertainment and view video from KHQA News. So when you don't have time to tune in, log on. ConnectTriStates.com, your official online connection to KHQA. Check it out. I'm engaged. You got engaged on a blind date? Hi, baby. Ooh, roommate. Get carried away with Friday's Fusion Skewers, starting at only $6.99. In here, it's always Friday. An important message from Dempsey, Dempsey, and Mullering. Home foreclosures and unemployment are at an all-time high. If you are caught up in these economic hard times, don't be afraid to explore your rights under Chapter 7 or Chapter 13 bankruptcy law. We will sit down with you in a free consultation and review your budget to help you decide what is best in your situation. Call our offices in Hannibal or Quincy today. Protecting your rights and your future. The law firm of Dempsey, Dempsey, and Mulring. Hello, this is Bill Craig from B&B Livestock Supply. We have a full shop of repairs, lights, brakes, hitches. We also have the Hillsboro aluminum truck beds. We will take off your old bed and put on and install a new one. Stop out and see us. B&B Livestock, Camp Point, Illinois, Junction 94 and 24. The No Worry Sales event is going on now at your Chevy store, Schottenkirk Chevrolet. Besides the built-in peace of mind, including guarantees and warranties, right now get 1.9% on a massive selection of GM certified vehicles. Here's a couple examples. I got an 07 Chevy Impala LT, only 44,000 miles, buy it now for just $12,900. I got a 2010 GMC Acadia SLT in leather, buy it now for just $27,900. And I've got an 08 Chevy Malibu LS, new body style, buy it now for just $13,900. Going to be your Chevy store, Schottenkirk Chevrolet, 24th Locust, Quincy. Mom, I, I think it's time we talk about you getting older. Talk to my plastic surgeon. No matter who you are, it's not <laughs> easy talking about aging. A message from Volunteers of America. Another rough day for the Illini as they lose to the high ACT kids in Evanston. Final count in this one, 71-70. Better news for the Missouri Tigers. 